Hi, I'm Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. And today I'm going to go over an introduction to the MOSFET transistor. So our goals are to identify the transistors and understand the flow of current in the transistors. So a transistor has multiple connections, a source, a gate, a drain, and a body. And for this, I recommend that you see the visual examples of the links that are posted on the website. So the source and the gate are what is going to first create what's called a channel underneath the gate. And so you create a channel underneath that gate and then you have a more positive voltage at the drain than the source and so your current is going to flow into this well through that channel and through the source. So that's how the current will flow. Depending on the value for your VGS value, that's going to control the channel itself and let you have a deeper channel or a more ch shallow channel that will then control the current, the amount of current flow. So a lot of current or a little current, depending on that value. For a PMOS, which is this one, here's our NMOS. You can see the differences are based on the substrate types themselves and what we call wells, which are this, in this case, these P plus wells. So for a PMOS, you can imagine the current is going to flow opposite. So it's going to go from the source to, drain, to gate is going to control the channel depth. And then the current is going to flow from the source through the channel and through the drain. So these are the symbols for the NMOS and the PMOS. So when you have a symbol with the gate, drain, and source, all of these will be abbreviated by a D, G for gate, S for source, and B for body. Typically, the body is not drawn in there. And if it's not drawn, you're going to assume that it will always be connected to the source side. If it is um, available for you to connect to, you can control the threshold voltage, which means the value that it needs to turn on the transistor by changing the voltage at the body. If it's at the source, if the body is connected to the source as shown here, then the threshold voltage will be very close to what is given in a data sheet. If it is not and it's connected to a different voltage, most of the time that voltage will be higher than the voltage when it's connected right to the source. This is the symbol for that you're going to typically see. Again, this assumes that that body is already connected to the source. How you identify the difference between the NMOS and the PMOS is just like with the BJT is the arrow side. So the arrow side will always be connected to the source for both PMOS and NMOS. And if it goes out, it's going to be NMOS. And if it goes in, it will be a PMOS. So again, this is going to be the source side. The opposite side will be drain. And then of course, this will be the gate. So for the PMOS, the same thing, you're going to connect the body to the source. And again, if not, then that threshold voltage will be higher than what is expected. If the normal threshold voltage is one volt and you don't connect it, it might be 1.5 volts if you have that body connected to a different voltage value. The current flow for the NMOS again goes from drain to source. And one thing that is unique for these is that your gate current will always be zero. So for both of these, you're going to have your gate current is going to be zero. Your source and your drain is therefore going to be identical values. So if we saw for the BJT that they weren't quite identical, whereas for the NMOS and the PMOS, they will be exactly identical. So that current flow going from the drain to the source is exactly the same. 
So now we want to understand the modes of operation for a MOSFET. So again, there's going to be three modes of operation. There's going to be cutoff, which is just when it's off. So that will be here at zero. Then we go through what's called this triode region, where it's more linear. And then it's going to get to what we call the saturation region, which was like the active region for the BJT. And this is the region that we want when we're working in an analog mode. And this is where, as VDS changes, my ID, which is this side of the graph, my ID will stay the same. So what changes this is my value for VGS. If I have a smaller value for VGS, this curve is going to flow along this line. As I increase VGS, I also am going to increase so say this is one volt, this is two volts. My current then will increase as I increase my VGS. It is therefore dependent on VGS. So these three modes, as I said, there's cutoff, triode, and saturation. So the conditions for cutoff is that V GS, that voltage between the gate and the source, is less than a threshold voltage. So this is a threshold voltage. A lot of times this is around one volt. If you're cut off, your current flowing through the transistor will be zero. For triode and saturation, you therefore have to have the transistor on, which is when you have the channel start. So that VGS needs to be greater than VTH. And then the comparison is going to be between VDS and VGS minus VT. This term VGS minus VT also has another term which is called the overdrive voltage. So in literature you may see this and all that the over overdrive voltage means is that it's VGS minus VTH. So that threshold voltage. If we're in the triode region, we're going to use this current equation, which you can see is dependent on VDS. And when we have the condition for the saturation, which is going to be more of our analog mode, we're going to use this equation to describe ID. You can see that it is not dependent on VDS, and it is only dependent on VGS. Therefore, there's a direct correlation between VGS and ID. So a couple of the other terms in here, you have mu n COX, mu n is the mobility of n, and then for P, these are all going to be P components, so that would be the mobility of a P. COX is the oxide of its capacitance of the oxide. W is the width of your transistor and L is the length. So this is L and W is the dimension here. So W and L depend on the layout of your transistor. And we use what's called a process transconductance parameter. A lot of times this will be the value that you're given from a data sheet. And that will be the combined value of mu n COX or mu p COX. And these are some typical values. So now we should understand some of the physics of the transistor along with the current flow. And this concludes this video. Thank you.